school board meeting to order. May I have a motion to go into executive session? Madam Chair. Ms. Mackey. I move to convene an executive session for the purpose of discussing student appeals, breach of contract, and security at public meetings. Do I have a second? Seconded by Dr. Cheryl Caution Parker. Any discussion? Seeing them, we'll call for the vote. Is everybody up electronically or do we need to just do hand? Just do hand, Jill? Okay. We'll just do hand. All in favor? Mr. Manning? Aye. Okay. Aye. Thank you. Motion carries unanimously. We will move into executive session. Thank you. May I please have a motion to come out of executive session? Madam Chair. Ms. Mackey. I move that we let the record reflect that executive session was concluded at 6.17 p.m. Okay. Do I have a second? Seconded by Dr. Cheryl Caution Parker. Any discussion? Seeing none, we will take the vote. Mr. Manning, you can say aye or whatever over yep. the phone. Everybody aye. else is it? And I'll be, I'll be in digitally after this, but aye. Okay, thank you. Um, everybody else up electronically? Okay, we'll take the electronic vote. Motion passes unanimously. Okay, we will now move on to 3.1, Inspirational Moment and the Pledge of Allegiance. Um, Ms. Mackey. Thank you, Madam Chair. In a world where you can do anything you determine to do, dream anything you desire to dream, endeavor anything you wish to endeavor, be anything you want to be, be kind, be kind, be kind. If you would all join me in the Pledge of Allegiance. I pledge allegiance to the flag of the United States of America and to the republic for which it stands, one nation, under God, indivisible, with liberty and justice for all. May I please have a motion to regard the approval of the agenda, please? Madam Chair. Ms. Mackey. I move to approve the October 12th, 2021 regular board meeting agenda. Is there a second? Second by Dr. Cheryl Caution Parker. Any discussion? Seeing note, we'll take the vote electronically. Aye. <laughs> okay, thanks, James. <laughs> Mr. Manning. Motion passes six in the affirmative, one in the negative. Okay, we will now move on to 5.0 consent agenda. May I have a motion to approve the consent agenda? Madam Chair. Ms. Mackey. I move to approve the consent agenda for the October 12th, 2021 regular board meeting. Is there a second? Second by Dr. Cheryl Caution Parker. Any discussion? Seeing none, we'll take the vote electronically. Mr. Manning, are you up now? I am, yes. Okay. Motion passes unanimously. We will now move on to 5.1, approval of the consent agenda. May I have a motion to approve the, oh, we already did that, I'm sorry. Okay, we're on 6.1, public participation. Before we go into public participation, I need to read something. Before we begin, I will remind our speakers that each person is limited to three minutes and that our meetings are streamed live and recorded. 
Speakers must refrain from using inappropriate language and engaging in any form of personal abuse or tax and must not refer to any student or employee by name. Questions asked during the public participation typically will be referred to the staff members for a response at a later time. Additionally, a guidelines member of the public may address the board on any subject within board authority. Okay, so at this time, we will start our public participation. Our first speaker is um, David Oberly. And Mr. Oberly, before you start, so you don't think I'm rude because they say I'm a little abrupt sometimes, mm -hmm. I'll do like this when you're getting close to your time. That's fine. Okay. Um, I did ask permission for this. Hello, board. Dr. Davis, thanks for my time tonight. I did ask permission to do this. I asked my one daughter, what's her opinion of wearing a mask at school? And this is what she said. And you'll have to forgive her. She's, she was seven at the time. She's now eight as of two days ago. So um, she kind of in the middle, she wanders off a little bit. So you'll have, hear some good at the end and so, uh, some good at the beginning, some at the end. Uh, sorry. Take a what would you like to say? Um, I don't want to wear a mask at school because it always hurts the back of my ear. I don't like it. Mm -hmm. And what else is not nice about them? We, we can't be able to, to talk and make sure that uh, some... Me and my sister and my, we can't have the same though. I just like to pull up my mask and let them know I'm talking. I like that. Because it's funny. She almost has to say that of me. So if you could talk to someone who's making you wear a mask, what would you say? I don't really like it, so please let me just wear it for one day without it. Okay. Okay, so that's my one daughter. Um, I didn't think I had to be here again and again. The, the legislature solved this problem. Um, hopefully the, the appeals court will eventually solve it again. Um, at, at least the legislature will solve it next year. Um, the only reason I believe that this board has uh, reenacted this policy is because they can, they want to. If you look at the trend graphs, nothing says, well, oh, we should do something now different than what we've been doing. The graph's going like this. Numbers are decreasing rapidly. Lexington County has fewer cases than Lexington than Richland County does. They don't have a mask, mask mandate for their districts. That's a fact. Just today they had 50 cases, Lexington and Richland County had 100. And that's, that's even scale for population, that doesn't make sense, okay? So there's no reason to do it other than you want to do it and you can do it. Um, there's, there's no science that says you have to do it right now. Um, that's, that's my thing and I've, I've seen at least one legislator say, y'all know what we intended by this, you know what we want you to do with this and there could be loss of funding. I don't think Richard II wants to do that. I don't want to see that done. But that's, that's a real, real possibility. He has said it. He goes, cuts in funding will be coming. So, you know, you can, this, this appeals, this, uh, this circuit court judge, she used like an insane policy to, to reenact this. It makes no sense. So that's all I got to say is, you know, my daughters, they don't want to do it. If they wanted, if they had no problem, I wouldn't be here. You wouldn't know my name especially this one daughter, she lost a whole year from this stuff last year. She's behind. She can't tolerate this anymore. So thank you. Thank you. Thank you, Libby. Our next is Jeff. I can't read your writing very well. I think it's Philippi. Okay, thank you. I'm going to talk fast. Um, since mid-August, the average rate, test rate has been almost cut in half. It's now around 8.5%. Uh, the number of hospitalizations for people under 20 is 2% since the start of COVID. Uh, the number of deaths for people under 20 is 16 since the start of COVID. I don't think school-aged children um, are the safety issue you're making out to be. Children have over a 99% survival rate in South Carolina. When I attempt to have my children uh, be opted out of wearing masks, I was pointed to the studies from DHEC on the district's website. First, all these studies are flawed for one unacceptable reason. Uh, there were no control groups. You can't have a scientific conclusion without a control group. And now we go into each study. The North Carolina study, the figures that were reported to the state were different than district enrollment numbers, which brings all numbers into question. 
Schools that were in this study all had mass mandates. Again, this means no control group. Uh, when asked about how they could claim such a low transmission rate for not wearing masks with no control group, the authors of the study refused to answer those questions. Contact tracing was used for data collected. Only 32 of 800 plus cases were contracted at school. Uh, the ABC says in its own study that uh, they can't measure the relative effectiveness of any specific school policy. That means they can't conclude that mass mandates actually made a difference. The Wisconsin study, other, tri other schools tried to use this study, which caused the lead author of the study, Tracy Hogue, to uh, take to Twitter to correct the record and the Wisconsin Secretary of Education from Tracy Hogue. Secretary Cardona, I was a senior author of this study. Our study is not able to give any information about the role masks played in the observed low in school transmission rates. We had no control group, so I don't know if the rate would have been different without masks. In comparison, there was a large study in Denmark which had a randomized control uh, group. Uh, a total of 3,030 participants ran were randomly assigned to wear masks, to not wear masks. 2,994 were assigned to the control group wearing masks. 42 participants not wearing masks, 1.8% contracted COVID. 53 in the control, 53 uh, not wearing masks contracted COVID. The difference between the two groups was a 0.3 of a percentage point. The difference uh, didn't have statistical significance. Uh, in Florida, where many districts were not required to wear masks, the CDC found that less than 1% of students were infected in schools uh, during the semester they reopened. England does not require masks. Norway is against masks. Um, Australia only requires masks when walking down the hall. Um, the CDC in uh, Europe gives the exact opposite advice about masking kids than the US CDC does because they've bent to the advice, uh, the narrative of the current administration. Our kids don't go to a public school, they are attending a government school. I believe, uh, I'll leave you with this. Um, Brooke Nichols from the infectious, uh, infectious Disease Modeler from Boston University School of Public Health said, the more and more data I see, the more comfortable I am that children are not, in fact, driving transmission, especially in school settings. Um, I think by tomorrow morning, kids should be allowed to opt out wearing masks. Thank you. Thank you. Our next speaker, Gary Gwynn. What is it? Gwynn. Thank you. Board members, I've been here many times before to speak on mask. I was here last year to speak on mask. And um, I'm going to change it up a little bit tonight. Um, I'm not going to speak at mask. I'm going to speak of my constitutional right to do wear mask or not wear mask. And I'm also going to speak on my constitutional right to basically have the ability in 2022 to vote because I voted for every one of you, and I'm right, going to exercise my constitutional right to vote against you and vote you off the board. And um, that being said, um, the this, this South Carolina legislators refused to enforce this law that is on the books, but mandates are still not laws. And you can't make a mandate unless, unless the... Um, city or the state or the or the federal government is under emergency situation that's law so i don't know where you get mandates from my child was put in a room at blythewood high school in a 10 by 18 room by himself without adult supervision for two days they did bring him food and water they did i mean they brought him food and water and you know what there's no virtual education for school district two at this point in time. So I would say you didn't provide him the right education or the ability to do his schoolwork, which two days, I mean, that was nine zeros. That was nine zeros in his class. Every one of his class teachers gave him zeros for not being in class. Well, you know what? I think it's time that the people of School District 2 decide that, sorry, we don't like you anymore. I'm speaking for myself, and I know you're smiling, Ms. Holmes. 
Um, we, we, we don't need I, I to call names. We, we, we will not. We will not call names. You can continue to speak, okay. but we're not. Please do I not address names. I apologize, Ms. Holmes. No problem. I apologize, but um, I mean, we're just done with this. One last thing before my time is up. The Bible says that in calling to him a child, he put him in the midst of them and said, Truly I say unto you, unless you turn and become like children, you will never enter the kingdom of heaven. Whoever humbles himself like this child is the greatest in the kingdom of heaven. Whoever receives one such child in my name receives me. But whoever causes him or little ones who believe me to me in sin, it would be better for him to have a great milestone, millstone fastened to his neck and be drowned in the depth of the sea. Thank you. Thank you. Thanks, Libby. I haven't seen anybody come out and touch that. I'm hugging. I'm wiping out the services as hard as we can fall. Thank you. Um, please, out of order, please. Thank you. I appreciate that. Um, thank you, Libby. Mary Livermore. Hi. I would like to say you have some amazing teachers in this district. I'm here because I care about the children. I had two children in Richland too and pulled both them out because of separate issues. One had several medical conditions and the other one was in the accelerated program. Several years ago, my son needed surgery and had to be out of school for six weeks to recover. The school said they didn't have any homebound teachers and I was a huge, uh, and and it was a huge obstacle to get him any assistance. My son ended up waiting for two months to get any homebound instructions. The other big issue was when I looked at the middle school he was zoned for, I realized it was going to be all technology-based. They had only computers, no books, no pencils. When I called the district office about the situation, I told them this was not good for my son's eyes and that he had already lost his peripheral vision and needed another surgery to address it. I also asked the school if it was possible to get books. I was told they had no books for the school. I explained that I didn't think all technologies were good for some kids, and this was an experiment and not in the best interest of the kids. The administration did not seem to care. While I was at St. Jude's Children's Hospital, I discussed this, my concern with his doctor, and he agreed it wasn't in his best interest. Finally, after an extremely difficult process, the district approved his move to a new middle school with books. Halfway through his second year of middle school, I received a phone call telling my son was not approved to attend that school and that two days, two days, he would be withdrawn and would have to return to the school that I tried to keep him away from. I called the principal first and was told there was nothing she could do. So then I called the district office and explained the situation all over again. I requested a little time to resolve the situation. As I was about to fly to St. Jude's with my son, I was already... I was already a it was already a stressful and emotional time for everyone. I was told no, there was nothing they would do to help. Fortunately, my husband was able to locate the approval in our records, which the district had apparently not filed correctly. While I sat on the plane, I realized the district leadership was not focused on what's best for the kids. I withdrew my son at the end of the school year. It may have been before the end. I can't quite remember. Then two years after my son's issues, I began to see the district moving further into a direction that concerned me, and I decided I also needed to withdraw my daughter. My daughter would say that she didn't want to use the bathrooms because so much was going on there. She would talk about the fights. She was an excellent student, but began to cry all the time and refused to go to school. It's, 
It had nothing to do with the classwork. It was a stuff going on in the school. Thank I could you, see Livermore. the district heading in the wrong direction. Thank you, Ms. Livermore. I pray and hope you listen to parents. Thank you, Ms. Livermore. I appreciate that. Okay, next we have Renee Lucido. I'm still not a public speaker, so some grace. It's fine. <laughs> um, I still haven't received any answers to one of the emails that I sent last month. Um, I'd like to remind you all that you're elected officials and you serve the public. You serve the public, public servants. So, um, and all of us, not just the ones that agree with you. So, um, I, I really feel like um, dissenting views are not given any attention. And I saw a lot of six to one votes last time I was here. And I feel like there's no discussion and I don't understand that. Uh, it's disturbing to me. Um, one of the answers I did get was that some of my facts and information was incorrect. But I wasn't corrected. I wasn't given any correcting facts. And I got my information from a website online. So I'd appreciate corrections to whatever I got wrong, because I don't want to be wrong. I want to know the truth. Um, I'm here because I'm concerned about critical race theory being taught in the schools around here. When I was doing my research, I looked into some of your bios and some of the goals. And to me, they look like a side rail back road into critical race theory, um, which is a Marxist ideology. Uh, it balkanizes, it shames, it blames, it dehumanizes, it causes bitterness, resentment, hatreds, and ultimately societal destruction. This nation was to be a melting point. One out of many, one, not the other way around. Uh, a house divided against itself can't stand. What we should be focused on in school is math, science, history, both good and bad, English, civics, our constitutional form of government, which is the best the world has ever seen and has lifted more people out of poverty than any other system. But our constitutional representative republic was meant for a moral people based on Judeo-Christian values, not atheistic Marxist ideology. No parent wants their children being sent to school to be taught he's a rotten oppressor who needs to apologize for his existence. Children can learn from any capable teacher, no matter what age, race, or ethnicity. Take those characteristics off the application and just choose the best. You don't have to have a hundred of any one race or gender. And gender identity, there's two genders. We all know that, that's science. Um, Children shouldn't be taught they are the product of their zip code, race, gender, ethnicity, but they're the product of their choices and their opportunities, and to make the best of the opportunities that they're given. But Marxist ideology, I will fight it. I'll do everything I can to keep that from creeping into our schools, and that's a promise I give to you. Thank you. Okay. Thank you. Um, Katie Lackboyd. Lakevold. Thank you. Um, I wanted to begin by saying that I'm disappointed. I'm disappointed because I sent um, numerous emails to the entire board, you, superintendent, um, and I heard responses from three board members. I did not receive a response from the chairman. Uh uh, we don't do that. We it's can't. Not your name, it's your title. No, we, we, it's, it's, still, it's still inappropriate. I did receive one from vice chairman and okay. one other board member. I did receive one from the superintendent after two um, requests, which I appreciate. I have called your office five times and left voicemails. I have had zero phone calls returned. I am asking for a phone call to discuss your mask mandate. Your data does not 
back it up. You are confusing our children. They are terrified of getting sick from something that has a 98 to 99% survival rate. It is not your job to protect my child. God gave my children to me. It is not your job to instill fear in my child. Um, the Bible says in 2 Timothy 1 verse 7, for God has not given us a spirit of fear, but of power and of love and of sound mind. The decisions being made right now are not ones um, of love and of sound mind. They are of division and they are of fear. And I would ask that you would reconsider your choices that you're making because your agenda right now is going to have long-term effects on these children. Thank you. Okay. Thank you. Thank you, baby. Next, we have Gus Philpot. Uh, good evening. My name is Gus Philpot. Thank you for continuing down the list of uh, speakers tonight instead of making us wait uh, two and a half hours. <clears throat> As I thought about the comments I'd like to make tonight, I considered Merrick Garland's reference to protesting parents as domestic terrorists. Then I thought about tonight's executive session agenda item of security at public meetings, and I wondered what the superintendent and the board chair plan for you. Since the executive session has concluded, now you know. Let me put your minds at ease. <clears throat> I am not a domestic terrorist. In fact, I'm not any kind of terrorist. However, if you believe the words in a September 15th email sent to me, which I read to you at the last meeting, and the comments on a September 16th article in the Voice newspaper, I'm a pretty bad person. Here's what the author of those words wrote about me. Continuous tribe of falsehoods and insults. Spout your hate. What my deceitful lying mouth has to say. My racist, Mr. hateful, Mr. lying Mr. remarks. Pot, my the board age. has no jurisdiction. I read that earlier in the before. That's why I read that at the beginning of the Now, the meeting. reason you are interrupting they, they me have, is what? Please now, speak up so Mr. I can hear Mr. you. Mr. Philpott, the reason I'm interrupting you is the fact that the board has no jurisdiction on that part of what you're talking about. If you have any additional contents that has anything to do with what the board has jurisdiction over, please go to that content. Content, thank you. I shall. From the September 16th comment in the Voice newspaper, I learned, quote, this rag of a paper might as well be the Gus Philpot show, along with who him and his band of racist choose to endorse or follow. Again, Mr. Philpot, the board has no jurisdiction on what's on a paper or on an email. But so they if have you jurisdiction have, if over you have the board. Something, if you have something that has anything to do with the jurisdiction of this presiding board, please go to that at this time before your time is stopped. Thank you. And further quote, I have Madam a Chair. filed legal complaint against their silent stooge, Gus Z. Again, Philpott. Mr. Philpott, I'm going to ask you to, once again, if it's something that the board does not, a private issue that you are having that has nothing to do with the jurisdiction of this board, I'm going to ask you to please refrain from those comments. Madam I've Chair. asked you that three times. Madam I'm Chair. Dr. Elkins, I'm, I mean, Dr. Scott, I'm talking. You have, you have, you have said that three times. Did is I hear there something a point of else, order? Is there something else that you would like to say besides yes. that? Continue. You have 26 no, minutes. No, Madam, Madam Chair. Um, Dr. El Dr. Scott, you're yes. out of order right now. I'll come no, back not. to you. Out of respect. Dr. Scott, for, I will come um, back Mr. to you. Phil Dr. Scott, he Scott he I will come back to you. As Dr. Any Scott. Other person for three minutes Dr. Scott, you are, Dr. Scott, please respect. Please respect. You're out of order. No, Mr. Philpott, you have six You have six seconds. Mr. Philpott still has three minutes because you're out of order. He's not um, Dr. Elkins, you are out of he order. He has the right to share. He Dr. Not Elkins. He's not Do I mean, I'm sorry, Dr. Scott. He's not calling any names. Dr. Not calling any Scott, names. please, if we acted like this in a classroom, if this was a classroom and you are out of order, 
But you're well, you would order. put students out of the classroom for being out of order. No, I would respect Mr. Fearpot, your time has expired. I'm going to say Thank point you. of order. Thank you. Uh, point of order. I think that our board chair is out of order. And I think that we um, I didn't. I didn't acknowledge your point of Mr. order, Ms. Agostini. You are still out of order. I did not acknowledge your point of order. We'll move on to the next public participation. Thank you, Mr. Fearpot. I have not I'm finished my comments. Thank you, Ms. Um, um, security, please. We have asked Mr. Um, Fearpot to please. Uh, I, I think we have asked Mr. Uh, Mr. Philpot, your time has expired. Please take a seat. No, Thank my you. time has not expired. Please take a seat, Mr. Philpot. Your time has expired. Please take a seat. Please, you are welcome to speak outside. The, please take a seat. Your time my has expired. My final comment is your general please counsel take a seat, for the Mr. district Phil Pott, your time will has explain expired. the dangers Security, of can you please step forward? For I have comments. asked Mr. Philpot to please remove himself from the podium as kindly as I can. Thank you very much. We will now move on to uh, we will move on to the next speaker. I can't hear you. Can we step outside for a second? Yes, for a second. Will I come back in? Sure. Thank you. Our next speaker will be Larry Smalls. I would ask if I can have that sheet of paper. Please. And please don't start my three minutes, please. I wanted to make sure that I give you some correspondence so that all of you could look at real quickly. Thank you. And good evening, all of you. Good evening. I'm trying to keep the tense level down. I might pull it up a little Thank bit, but you know, I want to kind of brace you for what I'm about to tell you. Let me know when all of you had an opportunity to look at that sheet of paper, please. We're good. Outstanding. You can start three. Thank, Thank you. you. On the Richland County School District 2 website, you have an organizational chart that illustrates the structure of the district and showing the relationship of the positions. Its purpose is to illustrate the hierarchy and to show the chain of command of the organization. Without this chart, it halts collaboration, hinders communication, and prevents cooperation. This is precisely what we have been seeing, we've been seeing over the past few months in this district. And it is truly an embarrassment for the teachers, school administrators, bus drivers, and most of all, the students. The question is, how do we get to this point? It is because we have a head administrator who is attempting to circumvent the collective board's authority and oversight by politicizing fundamental issues that create friction between school administrators and parents along with upending the parent's responsibility by selfishly determining what he foolishly believes to be our kids' best interest. He is not alone. Sadly, there are board members who share in this ambitious cause and are willing to abdicate their roles as overseers and counselors in order to fulfill his political career. See Richland County Council, Richland County School District 1, City of Columbia, and key representatives and lawyers. What's sad is that he lets you do the dirty work of fighting your fellow board members on public TV while he sits passively by. And he only intervenes when he wants to give the public appearance that he is level-headed and insightful to obtain public sympathy and generate support. I will end my time by stating this final point. Responsibility without accountability leads to autonomy, which is the essence of servant leadership. Until you cease your pointless mandates and are willing to humbly submit to the wishes of the Richland County School District to parents and cultivate an atmosphere of cooperation and collaboration amongst your bosses, the collective board, I will render to you the same level of cooperation and support you have given me over these past few months. No compliance to be one of the highest paid public officials in the state of South Carolina and not delivering on the services promised, like impartiality, character, and leadership, it would not be to my best interest as a taxpayer to support an official that's sacrificing the district's own responsibility to provide adequate education for our children to pursue his selfish political career. Thank you. Thank you. Thank 
Thank you. Monica Glowinski. We got it right. Oh, Thank good. you for pronouncing it correctly. <laughs> Those who give up essential liberty to purchase a little temporary safety deserve neither liberty or safety. I moved to Blythewood five years ago. Prior to me moving here, I was very active in politics. And when I moved here, I said, no more. I'm done. I'm going to be a PTO mom. I'm going to go to school with my daughter and have lunch with her. I'm not going to get involved in politics. Well, after attending this meeting tonight, I'm back. I am back involved in politics from just observing the participation from the crowd and from the elected officials. I sat in your seat. I was a local elected official years ago. So I know, I know what you're going through and you do not have an easy, easy task. There is not one person in this room, not one parent in this room who is not concerned about the health and safety of our children. Those sitting behind me and those sitting in front of me. That's what we're here about. And I would venture to say the reason we have so many people in this room is because we are concerned about the health and safety of our children. COVID is a threat to our children, but it's not an extraordinary threat. It's an ordinary threat. The risk of our children being infected by COVID are similar to other respiratory viruses that we have seen for decades in our school, decades. The flu is much more dangerous to our children and has been for years. It never has an elected body such as yourself or as city council or county council respond with such draconian measures as these mask mandates. You look at the DHEC rates on their website every day. You can watch the rates. The rates of COVID are dropping. They're declining. You should be a fact-based decision-making organization and base it off of those facts. I'm teaching my 10-year-old daughter to be a critical thinker. And I teach her to ask the why and the how. And last year she asked why. Why do we have to wear a mask, mom? And I said, that's a good question. So we went on this journey together to explore why we should wear masks. And you know what? We didn't find any evidence. There is not any evidence out there that speaks to why masks are effective. There is nothing that says the efficacy of this flimsy little mask is going to protect my life or my daughter's life. And then she asked the how. She said, how are we going to save people? And again, it's utter hogwash. There is nothing out there definitively that shows that a mask is going to save my daughter's life, that a mask is going to save your life. At what cost are mask man, or man, mandated masks having on our children? Isolation from friends, teachers focusing on mask wearing rather than, con than content and problems with correct speech. And I can go on. I keep hearing over and over again that our children like to wear masks. I got it, Libby. And like, like children like to wear masks and they are resilient. No public policy should ever be justified by the, by the alleged resilience of our children. Let parents decide if they should wear a mask. Remove the mask mandate and make it optional. Thank you. Thank you. It's a Clorox wipe. I got you. <laughs> Five seconds to go. Thank you. Our last speaker, Matthew Wilder. Good evening. Good evening. I was going to start with a joke to kind of break the tension. I know passions are high. They probably should be. Uh, why were the teacher's eyes crossed? Anybody know? I'll yield my time to anyone that gets it, and I'll buy you a biscuit. Uh, it's because she couldn't control her pupils. <laughs> Might be appropriate for this evening. I'd also like to add, this wasn't prepared, so I'm eating into my other prepared remarks. Um, but I'd argue that I've never met this gentleman, very passionate, um, very nicely shaped head, um, that board policy BCA talks to the board member code of ethics. And if he's raising concerns about a particular board member or any board members uh, potentially slanderous comments in any sort of public uh, forum, that they would be in violation of board policy BCA and would such be under the jurisdiction of this board and should be heard by the board. Um, it's just something I came up with in three minutes at Google. Um, but I'll move on to my, my remarks are specifically, a previous board member asked that there be public comments about the superintendent's contract, um, and that, that was not passed because it was seen not to, uh, to fall in line with the previous board's policy, even though that particular board member cited other instances when it was allowed. Another board member 
uh, so that she wasn't going to be able to make it because it was on a Friday. I had military drill, so I couldn't attend or watch online. I have subsequently watched it um, after the fact. I was going to play a little round of Jeopardy for some folks to guess some typical salaries of some South Carolina officials. Anyone know what the governor of South Carolina makes? And these are all verified with the South Carolina Department of Administration. 107. 107 is a rounded number. I'll give you that. You also get a biscuit. State Superintendent of Education. 100 would be high. $92,000 a year. A federal GS-15, which is the highest civilian pay grade for a federal employee in the Columbia area. Anybody? Any guesses? 140,000. Uh, the president of York Technical College. 100 and, I'm going to round to 160,000. President of Midlands Tech. Uh, $178,000. The Secretary of Defense of the United States. Now, there's not a Secretary of Defense for South Carolina. $221,000. Um, what I found from public information was that the superintendent's new salary is $244,000. In 2016, his salary started at $186,000. If you do the math, that's an increase of $58,000, which is a 31.4% increase over his previous starting salary. The comments were made that that is commensurate with other teachers' pay raises. From 2016 to 2021, a doctoral teacher with no years of experience experienced a 5% increase in, in his or her salary. That increase alone would pay for one teacher with a doctorate degree in this district, or roughly $25 to each teacher to buy some school supplies. Uh, Georgia, or Greenville School District, that, that superintendent has 15 years of experience. He makes $270,000. Thank you. Reconsider the contract. Okay, that will conclude our public participation. We will now move on to 7.1 student appeals. Do I have a motion for student appeals? Madam Chair. Ms. Agostini. And we are going to separate these students. Uh, I move for student number one to attend Blythewood Academy. Okay, is there a second? Second. Seconded by Dr. Cheryl Caution Parker. Any discussion? Seeing none, we will take the vote electronically. Mr. Manning, are you still with us? I am, and I'm uh, digital. Okay, you, you're not digital? No, I am digital. I'll be able to vote online. Okay, thank you. Oh. Motion passes unanimously. Do we have a second, Ms. Agostini? Madam Chair, student number two, I move to attend um, to Blythewood Academy. Okay, is there a second? Seconded by Dr. Scott. Any discussion? Seeing none, we will take the vote. Motion passes, you, um, I'm sorry, seven, six to one. Um, six yes, one no. Okay. Ms. Agostini, do we have another student? Uh, I move for student number three uh, to deny the student appeal and uphold the district's decision for expulsion. Is there a second? Seconded by Dr. Cheryl Caution Parker. Any discussion? Seeing none, we'll take the vote.
Motion passes four to, wait a minute, one, two, I'm sorry, five to, five yes, two no's. Motion passes. Do we have another appeal, Ms. Agostini? Uh, I move um, for student number four that uh, we deny the student's appeal. Okay, is there a second? Second. Second by Dr. Shore Caution Parker. Any discussion? Seeing none, we will take the vote. Yes. That's correct. Everyone voted? You waiting on me? Okay, I did it. Let me, do you want, to, want me to hit the red change vote again? I already sent it. Want me to do that? I just voted in the affirmative. I agree, affirmative. Okay, you got it? Okay, thank you. Okay, motion passes unanimously. Um, Ms. Agostini? Are we, that was our last one, correct? That's it, there were four students. Okay, great, okay, thank you. Moving on to 7.2, breach of contract. Do I have a motion? Madam Chair. Ms. Agostini. I move that we direct the administration to make a formal complaint to the State Board of Education regarding a professional employee who breached their employment contract with the district. Is there a second? Second. Second by Dr. Cheryl Caution Parker. Any discussion? Okay, seeing none, we will vote electronically. Vote carries unanimously. Okay, we will move on to 8.1 policy revision, approval of policy FF naming of new schools. Do I have a motion? Madam Chair. Ms. Mackey. I move to approve policy FF naming new schools. Is there a second? Uh, I think I heard, was that you, Dr. Scott? Okay, seconded by Dr. Scott. Any discussion? Seeing none, we will take the vote. Motion passes six yes, one no. Okay. Ready? Okay. New business, moving on to approval of bond referendum resolution. Do I have a motion? Do I have a motion? Madam Chair. Um, who was that, Ms. McFadden? Yes. Was that you, Ms. McFadden? It was. Yes, Ms. McFadden. I make a motion um, to approve the bond, the bond refunding resolution. Thank you. Seconded by Ms. Mackey. 
Any discussion? Madam Chair? Yes. If I could have somebody come and just brief the public on exactly, you know, in layman's terms so that we understand what this is and what we're doing. Dr. Miley, if you would address. Yes, that's fine, Ms. Agostini. Dr. Miley, Dr. Davis. Oh, Mr. Miley. Thank you. I um, appreciate that, that uh, question and opportunity. Uh, in fact, I have more experts besides myself uh, <laughs> here tonight. We have our bond counsel, Franny Heiser and Asada Herbert Williams from the Burr Law Firm, yeah. or Furman, excuse me, Foreman, and Mike Gallagher from Compass Advisors here to describe exactly what we're doing. But in layman's terms, what we're doing is you might refinance your mortgage on your house at a lower interest rate to save money. That's what we're doing. We have a bond issue that we issued back in 2013 at about three and a half percent interest, and we can refinance that a little bit, at a little bit below two percent interest right now. And as Michael described in more detail, it saves us about and saves the taxpayer about two million dollars over the life of this retirement of this bond. So I'll let Mike answer any more detailed questions if there are so. Is that okay? Thank you. I, I have well, and I just have one more uh, question or comment. Um, in May of 2019, I stepped down um, as board secretary because of concerns I had signing a document with our board chair who had outstanding ethics fines. Um, this board chair is now our secretary. Are Ms. there Agostini. any hesitations? Ms. Agostini, you are out of line no, with that. No, I'm not out Ms. of line. Ms. Agostini, you, you do not need to disparage your fellow board member. You are out of line with that. Please make your comments without being disparaging to someone else. Please just make your comments. Thank uh, you. If you'll recall, there, we had to amend bond documents to, to note that we had a board member at that time, the board chair, um, had ethics fines, and that went into a bond document. My question is, because the board secretary continues to have these ethics fines, is there Ms. any Agostini, hesitation? you are again sorry. out of line. What? Excuse me. Excuse me. We are not going is to do this. Is there any this. No, no, no this it, excuse me. Excuse me. Signature on it. We are not going to turn these meetings, every meeting, into a situation where it's name calling. This is not about the children. We are supposed to be here about the children. Ms. Agostini, if you this have a about question, tax dollars if you have and a question about the bond referendum, address your question to Mr. Miley. But we're not going to sit here every week and disparage each other. This is ridiculous. The question and this would, would be not be allowed. Attorney, you, actually, are, you, you do not allow this in the classroom, and we will not allow this here. So we're going to go ahead on. No more questions. I think the move, it was already, I was giving leeway, but I think that it had already been seconded. So we will now call for the vote. Yeah, I, you're out of order. You need to finish the discussion. You're out of order. We have already. I'm happy to comment that. Wow, that hurts my ears. Please, thank you. This is childish, childish behavior, and it's embarrassing. If your children acted this way, you would not be, be, in, uh, be in favor of this. You need to be ashamed of yourselves. You're, you're here. If you're here for the children, be here for the children. I am now calling for the vote. You vote electronically. Madam Chair, you need to. I, a, I have called for the vote, Ms. Agostini. You end need of to vote for the call for the I've, vote. I've, I've already called for the vote. The vote has been moved and seconded. We'll call for the vote. I've timed out, but I'm voting in the affirmative. Motion passes unanimously. Oh, I'm sorry, one abstention. Ms. Agostini abstained. Motion passes six to one abstention. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you, Dr. Miley. Okay, we will now have 10.1, the superintendent's highlights, Dr. Davis. Thank you, Madam Chair. Madam Chair, members of the board, to our viewing public and those that are in attendance, tonight's superintendent highlights are as following. 
Tonight, I will begin my highlights with information about the COVID-19 vaccination clinics being held at each of our five high schools through Monday, October the 18th. Students, staff, and community members can still book appointments online for one of the three remaining clinics. COVID-19 boosters are also available at these sites in accordance with the CDC guidelines. We thank our partner, Prisma Health, for bringing these clinics to our community. Visit the district's website for links to sign up for a clinic on October 14th, October 15th, or October the 18th. The Richland Library is encouraging Richland to students to learn freely uh, by making all, of, making all of them library card holders. So through Connect Ed and White House initiative to break, and a White House initiative to break education barriers, every student is receiving a library card which provides free access to Tutor.com, Khan Academy, downloadable publications, broadband connectivity, wireless access, and more. The Richland II Order of the Flame, presented by Richland II Education Foundation, recognized graduates, former employees, and friends of the district for their service and dedication. The gala honoring this year's recipients is scheduled for Thursday, November the 18th at 6 p.m. at the R2I2 Conference Center. Tickets are $50 each and can be purchased at eventbrite.com. This year's honorees are the graduates, the late London Harrell and the late Justice Stewart, former superintendent, Dr. Stephen Hefner, the late and former board member, Chip Jackson, and former principal, Sharon Button O'Keefe. Jackson Creek Elementary School fifth grade teacher, Volante Gibson is the 2021 Richland II District Teacher of the Year. Ms. Gibson, Mr. Gibson rose to the top of a very passionate and extremely gifted field of teachers and the districts to claim the honors. He is now preparing to compete for the State Teacher of the Year Award. Today, Palmetto State Arts Education presented Bridge Creek Elementary School Medical Engineering and Discovery uh, through Arts Magnet School and, and L.W. Connors Elementary Arts Integrated Magnet School with, with awards. At the organization's Art Integration Conference, Bridge Creek received the Art Integration Award and Conda received the School of Excellence in Arts Education Award. Tomorrow, the South Carolina Commission on Higher Education and this, and this College Board will present Blythewood High School with the College Access Champion School Award. The school is being recognized for putting forth premier efforts to guide students to post-secondary education. Richland II has 12 seniors who are semifinalists in the 67th Annual National Merit Scholarship Program. They are Macy Collins, Evan Cox, and Grace Gatman of Blythewood High School, Noah Anderson and Alexander Winslow of Richland Northeast High School, Scott Dillon, Angel Wong, Zachary Wong, Christopher Lee, Elizabeth McCollum, Pranav Pula and Abdul Rahman Solomon of Spring Valley High School. We wish these students all the best as they continue in the competition to be named National Merit Finalists, which would make them eligible for the prestigious national scholarships. About 80 students in Richland too will participate in the Dominion Energy Power Forward Program. This partnership with the University of South Carolina Dollar Moore School of Business and Dominion, and Dominion Energy provides unique opportunities for students to learn more about business degrees and professions. Participants will experience job and college shadowing opportunities, complete service learning projects, and take part in the project-based learning. The first monthly learning opportunity is scheduled for October the 20th. Three Richland II teachers are among the first cohort of Carolina Family Engagement Center's Teacher Partners Initiative. Our participants are Maria Herman, Caitlin Spears McDonald of Jackson Creek Elementary School, and Alexis Williamson of Richland Northeast High School. The two-year professional development initiative used getting to outcomes an evidence-based strategy, strategic planning tool to develop, implement, and evaluate family engagement tools and activities for their classrooms. The program is sponsored by the South Carolina Improvement Council and the University of South Carolina's College of Education with a grant fund with a grant funded through the U.S. Department of Education. October is National Principals Month. The district is featuring our principals on social media and in news and newspaper ads running in the Northeast News and the Country Chronicle throughout October. Our principals demonstrate daily, in a premier way, their passions for education and the students they serve. Thank you to each of you for the work that you do and the spirit in which you do it. 
In honor of Breast Cancer Awareness Month, district employees are forming teams to participate in the 2021 Walk for Life to benefit the Prisma Health Breast Center. The district is, is observing National Hispanic Heritage Month. We began paying tribute to Hispanic Americans who have positively influenced and enriched our nation and society via social media posts last month. An exhibit celebrating Hispanic culture and heritage is on display in the lobby here in R2I2. The Department of Diversity and Multicultural Inclusion will host Hispanic Heritage, a student celebration of hope at R2I2 on Thursday, October the 14th at 6 p.m. Other celebrations during the month of October include National Custodians Day, which was on October the 1st, National Instructional Coaches Day, which was October the 6th, Indigenous Peoples Day on October the 11th, National Bosses Day on October 16th, and National School, Board, School Bus Safety Week beginning on October the 18th. Madam Chairwoman, uh, members of the board and our community, that um, concludes this board meeting superintendent's highlights. Thank you. Thank you, Dr. Davis. We have a lot to be thankful and rich into all the great accomplishments. Thank you so much for sharing that. We will move on to agenda item 11.1, draft agenda item for the October 26, 2021 meeting. Dr. Davis. Madam, Madam Chairperson, Madam Chairwoman, for the October 26, 2021 regular scheduled board meeting, we are uh, starting this board, calling this board meeting to order uh, with uh, and going into executive session at 530. We'll come out of executive session, begin our public session at 630. Uh, on the draft agenda for the 26th, we have as following executive session items, student appeals and breach of contract. We have our inspirational moment and pledge of allegiance. We'll ask for the approval of the, of the agenda and followed by special recognitions. We'll have the and ask for the approval of our consent agenda. We'll ask, we'll have public our first public participation, um, voting on executive session items, which include student appeals and a breach of contract. We'll have unfinished business action requested, which will be the proposed attendance line changes. We'll have new business, no action requested, which will be the superintendent's highlights, our capital improvements update, as well as pos policy proposal, uh, GCCAF, professional staff academic leave, We'll have items for the next agenda meeting, which will be, I'm sorry, next board meeting, which will be November the 16th. We'll ask for the approval of that agenda. Public participation number two will follow. Board of Superintendent comments, executive session two if needed. Our voting on executive session two items if needed, and then adjournment. And that concludes um, the draft agenda for October 26th. Thank you, Dr. Davis. May I have a motion for the approval of the draft agenda for the October 26th, Madam 2021 Chair. meeting? Madam Chair. Ms. Mackey. I move to approve the draft agenda items for the October 26, 2021 board meeting. Is there a second? Second by Dr. Cheryl Caution Parker. Any discussion? Seeing them, we'll take Chair. the vote. Um, Ms. Agostini. Um, is this the time where we ask for things to be included in the agenda or in the future? We you can, Ms. Agostini. Okay, the first thing that I'd like to ask is, um, I, I was reading in a board brief dated August 4th that um, there was a professional development back to school, and I think it would be important for um, the board to hear it along with the community. There was an in-service that was talking about the difference between critical race theory and culturally relevant teaching, and I think it would be extraordinarily beneficial for us as a board and for the community to hear what we are doing in our classes. This is not something that I want, it doesn't necessarily need to be put on next, the next meeting agenda, but I would like for us to look at doing that in the next few meetings. Okay, okay, thank you, Ms. Agostini. We'll take your suggestion into consideration. Thank you. Appreciate All right, that. and I, I would also- Are you like, not finished? No. Okay, continue. Um, I would like to, um, I'm, I, I'm gonna move that uh, we add policy BD, organization of the board and put that on our board meeting um, next agenda and review it and have a discussion. Okay, all that will be taken into consideration. Okay, next. I'm um, sorry, don't we usually vote on that and see if people are in favor of that? No, we have to. Oh, this is a secondary motion. Are you making a... Mm -hmm. I, 
Is that what is that your intention, Ms. Yes, Anderson? I, I would like to add. One was to discuss that I would like for us to consider putting the uh, what I just said, the critical race theory um, discussion on. But what I would like to do is move to add policy BD organization of the board and put it on the next agenda for discussion. Two motions. Okay. 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 Is there a second to Ms. Agostini's motion? Second. Seconded by Dr. Scott. Any discussion? Okay. Seeing none, we will take the vote on Ms. Agostini's first um, amendment to the, to the uh, motion. Ms. Agostini, can you restate your motion? Uh, my motion is to add policy BD organization of the board to the October 26, 2021 agenda. I thought that was your second one. Where's your, I th okay, the first one was, it. Ms. Agostini, we all make mistakes. You've made some too, so, I, so I'm just asking for clarity so we can get this right. So, okay, so we, okay, so we can go for the second one. Thank you. Okay, so we can take the vote on that. Thank you. We'll do it electronically. No, I have not. I think I hit the wrong, I think I hit the wrong, I hit the wrong thing. I meant to vote no. How do I, can I change that or can you change that for me? Did you change that for me? Thank you. Uh, you should be able to on your board docs. Doesn't it say you can cancel it, out? No, the light it? is the light is not lit up. But thank you, it's not lit up at this time. You reopen it for me. Thank you. Okay. Motion one, two, three. Motion fails. Three yes, one, two, three, four no. Okay. Now back to the original um, motion. Ms. Mackey, can you restate your motion, your original motion? The original motion was to approve the draft agenda items for the October 26th, 2021 regular board meeting. Okay, is there a second? Second. Seconded by Dr. Cheryl Caution Parker. Any discussion? Seeing none, we will now call for that vote. Okay, motion passes, one, two, three, four, five, yes, two, no. Motion passes. Okay, we will now move on to, there's no need for, there's no need for 13.1 public participation two. So we are now on board and superintendent's comments. Um, we will start with Ms. Agostini. Thank you, Madam Chair. First of all, I want to thank all of those who have come tonight to watch this, and especially all of you that um, 
stood up in public participation to share with us your thoughts and opinions. You're right, we are elected officials, we work for you. So, um, and also I would like to take this opportunity to apologize to Mr. Philpott. Um, I thought what was done was uncalled for and you had the floor and I'm sorry that Ms. you Agustini. were cut off. Thank you for all coming, have a great night. Thank you, thank you. We will now go to um, Ms. McFadden. Um, I would just like to say that uh, I do appreciate you all coming out and letting us know and sending your emails what, what you'd like for us to do. We do appreciate that. And I would like to say that, you know, there are things that other board members want to discuss. And I think that it is fair for us to hear each other out. And I know that, you know, we all have difference in that opinion, but we don't know what might be a reason for someone requesting something or getting the information that they need. Um, tonight was very nerve wracking. And I want to say thank you to Miss Ruth, who had to continuously get up and wipe down the podium. Um, I know she was a little nervous, you know, just getting up constantly. But I want to say that we are a community working and living together. If we can't get along in one small room together, it's going to be difficult to live with each other. We may run into each other at the grocery store. Our kids may play together. We've got to learn how to get along as best as we can. And um, our kids do watch this. Some parents allow their kids to watch it. Um, and I wouldn't, you know, I don't let my kids watch it. They don't really want to, but I wouldn't want them to because we need to act as adults on all sides and on all levels. And no one is perfect and people have attitudes and, you know, they have things that they want to express. And, but we've got to learn how to be adults. And we've got to learn how to work together. I ran off of collaboration and cooperation. That was what my slogan was. And I want to collaborate and cooperate with everyone, not just some board members, all board members, all, all community members, the best that we can. Um, we would hate to find out that something happened to someone in this room if we leave out of here, regardless of what we may feel about each other. But if we hear, oh, something happened to this particular person or they perished, the way that we've treated each other will continue to live with us. And if we can think about that and how you address someone and talk to someone that they might not be here tomorrow, then I hope that we can work together a little better. And that's my forte on it. Thank you all. Be safe and have a good night. Thank you, Ms. McFadden. Um, Dr. Scott. Just want to say thank you for all you guys coming out. Um, just a few days ago, I saw a quote from um, Chuck Roof on Facebook, and I thought, wow, I love this. As many of you know, I used to share quotes every board meeting, and then I changed. But I think I'm going to go back to doing that. This quote stated, we all place ourselves in danger to one degree or another when we stand up. But we place our children and our grandchildren in even greater danger when we don't. I think that quote is just so fitting, and especially for tonight. Many of you have come out tonight and you share your views, and I do appreciate that. Some I agree with, some I don't. But one thing that is very disappointing to me is when you have a personal vendetta with someone and you don't allow them to share. When other folks got up here and they talked about basically the superintendent's contract, I didn't agree with it, but it was still shared. Someone else came up and I think they spoke about something else. Didn't agree with it, but it was shared. We had another person come up and begin to share something and he was immediately asked not to share. That, that's disappointing to me, because as long as you don't share names, you are entitled as the public, because again, we work for all of you. We don't work for Dr. Davis, and we don't work for each other. We work for all of you. Whether we believe it or not, we do. You guys voted for us to come here. And it's just disappointing when we don't do the right thing, and we quickly say that the students are watching, they are, and they're watching you too when you make those comments. So out of much respect for the chair, who I love dearly, 
I, I'm, I'm going to make a suggestion, and that's all I can do. You know, when we had a former chair, I thought we were going from the pot to the frying pan, and I see we are. So I'm going to make a suggestion to the board chair, and I'm going to suggest that the board chair signs up to take some Robert Rules of Order, ethical classes, Dr. Scott. and to repeat the Dr. board Scott. chair Dr. duties Scott. and responsibilities. You are out of, you are out of order. Or, no, Don't do that. Don't do that. Thank because you for the campaign speech. No, we appreciate please don't it. do that. Don't, it's not about. Oh, I don't so need a campaign silly. speech. I just won with 32,000 16 a couple years ago, the highest Dr. number of votes. Dr. Dr. You need to worry about Dr. Scott. Dr. Scott. But again, I'm, I'm not, not worried about 2022, Dr. Scott. What, what, what I'm saying I'm is, I'm not. I made a suggestion, and back to what was said. Students are watching, and I couldn't finish what I said. Dr. I'm Scott, you're of, being dis I'm you're being out disparaging care, to another out board care, member. And out if you if you are sincere what, with your comments, those are the comments you. that you make privately to no, someone, no, no. Dr. Scott. What I'm going if to say you is, are sincere with your comments, Dr. Scott, now you will make those open. comments privately. Um, we, like we, don't, we don't disparage students. We are not going to disparage other board members, whether it's myself or anybody else. We are not going to do that. I will make a motion that the chair steps down from being chair until she receives this. A motion on the table. I would well, second that. Not, the motion is on the uh, Out of order, out of order. No, um, if a motion, motion is thank there, you, you thank you, doctor. Second. If a motion is thank made, you ask for a second. Scott. If a motion is made according to the public rules of order, thank you. If a motion is made, you make a second. I gave a second. Thank you, Dr. Scott. And then now we're in note. Uh, going on to. Um, no, no, no. We are with Dr. Caution Parker. Do you have. Do you um, have attorney any Hawkins, you we have need you to to amaze me the number of people up here that come up with some of these comments and they're the last ones to have on any, the, any authority or any right on the table. to a uh, tough to oh, make so comments, to make comments. Order. My um, attorney Hawkins, me, if you could come up. Thank Dr. Davis. Dr. Davis, Dr. Davis call for attorney for the highlights this evening because the highlights are what we're supposed to be about. There's a motion Not all this other table. esoterical stuff. The children and the highlights are what we are supposed to be table. about. That's why I got elected. That's why I spent 40 years in Richland too. There's a motion but all on this the other table. stuff, all this other stuff is a bunch of crud. There's a There's motion a vote on the table. Of order, and to this evening that was not the way. Madam Chair, there's a motion on the um, table. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Ms. Mackey, do you have any comments? No, we can't Ms. throw Mackie, the comments. There's a comments? motion on the table. We have to follow Robert rules of order. Whether it passes or not, no. there's a motion no. made on the table. Um, okay, at this time, I'm going to make my comments, and then we are going to make a motion to adjourn. There's I have never seen table. such a situation in my life. Wow. It is, it is amazing to me that adult people would yeah. use a school board meeting for your own per personal political agendas. Mm. We are here for children. We are here for children. We are not we are not here. We are not here for this. We all realize that this is a motion and a movement that is going around the country that it is to disrupt and come to meetings Chair, and, to do things, and to do things at meetings that are not appropriate. There's a motion So on the at table. this time, that's all I'm going to say. Dr. Davis, did you have anything that you Dr. wanted to Davis, say? Dr. Davis, there's a motion on the table, and you know Robert Rules of Order. I made a motion. It was seconded by Ms. Agostini. Ms. Dr. Agostini, Davis, you know, Dr. 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 Atkins, you do not have the right to remove Scott. me from any position on this board. I can make a motion. When you were in your orange suit, I, I, we could I have can, made I that motion, motion against you, but we did I, not. I can make a motion. So Point please, order. let's not go there tonight. Okay, let's let's call for, I think at this time, we will call for the ending of the meeting. I make a motion that we adjourn this meeting. Do I have a second? Second. Seconded by Dr. Caution Parker. Any discussion? Seeing none, for we will record, take the vote. The we will take the vote. Hand vote. Aye. Okay. Six to one. Okay, thank you. You all have a blessed evening.